we're trying to bring Miami culture into barbecue. I think the barbecue space has always existed in this really traditional way right. in like Texas and the Carolinas, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think Miami's ever had, or South Florida's really had any real barbecue. So, you know, I think, I think the idea is to really tell that story. And for us, what we were trying to do in the beginning was, or what we're still trying to do today is really take what we consider like the flavors of Miami. So Cafe Butero, right? When I started thinking about this stuff, I was always like, dude, what, what's the parallel? Like, how do I bring, what's the two things that these two, that this culture and the city or these two cultures, what do they have in common? And for us, it was realizing like, when you go have barbecue, you never have barbecue alone. It's always a group activity. Sure. It's family, it's friends. It it's always, together. right. It's always yeah. about bringing people together. So what does that in Miami? Cafecito. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron, but we got something special in store for you. We're down in Kendall, Miami, at the home of Apocalypse Barbecue, the hottest barbecue spot to hit Miami, and we got some special cooking to show you what he's doing here, and it's incredible. And this is the man that makes all the magic happen. Aaron, how you doing, man? Good to I'm see good. you. Excellent. Aaron's the main pit master here at Apocalypse Barbecue. He's gonna take us back behind the scenes and show us where all the magic really happens. So let's go ahead and check it out. What do you think, Aaron? Sounds good. Uh, right now we have about three smokers going. Okay. We have our uh, two smokers for ribs and then we have one smoker that's running our brisket and uh, pork shoulders right now. We run the smokers pretty much 24 seven. Wow. Uh, the smokers get turned on in the morning at five on Tuesday uh -huh. and then they run all the way through till Sunday. No kidding, so just 24 seven or 24 six, I guess is more yeah. like it, right? <laughs> All right, Aaron, we got so many smokers and so many proteins going on. What are we going to look at first here? So we're going to take a look at our ribs that we have here on the smoker. Um, Diving right in. I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. Uh, yeah. Now we keep the ribs smoking around 250 degrees. Okay. Um, right, That's right before we wrap them. Uh, they're going to get up to about 165 degrees and then we'll wrap them up in some brown sugar and then put them back in to, to settle up and finish overnight. Beautiful, the color on them is outstanding. Thank so, you. and how many racks of ribs do you keep going at a time? Uh, to anywhere between about 70 to 90, depending on the day. Wow, and how many days does that last you? Uh, that'll last us for a, uh, about a day service. One day? Yeah. That's a lot of ribs, folks. That's a lot of ribs. These things are just awesome. Just awesome. How many gallons are you sure of these? A um, thousand each. A thousand each. Yeah. So we got four, one, 000. two, three, four thousand gallons worth of uh, smoke Plus going. The, the 500 over there and yeah. the 250 in the back. So 4750. I feel like I'm in heaven. I'm yeah. in smoke or heaven there right here, man. Try not to burn your eyes in the process. That's right. <laughs> Lost many eyebrows, have you, Aaron? Uh, eyebrows, no. Finger hairs, arm hairs, yes. It's the beard I'd be worried about. Yeah. Do you find like on sunnier days that the smokers run different? Once we got to the winter time, I was like, oh man. <laughs> I was like, these things are like 20, 30 degrees cooler than what they normally are. Yeah. And it was literally just because it was 20, 30 degrees cooler out here. I bet Jeff looked at the firewood bill, went, what happened here? Why are we spending yeah. so much, right? I, I told him, I said, hey, we might want to anticipate with the colder weather, we're going to yeah. go through a lot more wood. Yeah. He's like, are you sure? I said, That's Absolutely. amazing. See that? Even in Miami, we got cold spells. Yeah. Un unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> So Aaron, so that was the ribs. So you want to show us some other proteins you have on here now? What, Absolutely. What right. uh, so we have briskets over here. Um, these are finishing up. Uh, these will probably be coming off the smoker anytime after about two or three in the morning. Oh, wow. Um, these are all wrapped up here. We've got, I want to say about 20, 25 briskets here for tomorrow. All wrapped service. up like presents. Yeah, little Christmas presents. So how long on average does it take you guys to cook a brisket? Um, about 18, 24 hours. Wow, no yeah. kidding. Um, and then the shoulder is the same thing. Um, a little later in the cooking process, we'll take some of the shoulders and we'll move them to the front so that they get the same heat that the briskets have been getting so that they finish in a timely manner. Okay, well. so I've always been curious, you know, I'm a, I'm a backyard barbecue guy. I don't do it commercially. I don't do it competitions, but do you, is the process kind of the same? So like at home, I'll cook my brisket to about 165, 170 degrees. I want to make sure that bark is set. That's when I wrap it and I'll cook it to around the 203 area, something like that. Yeah. Is it kind of a similar process? Sim or? Similar process. Um, we wrap the briskets and once we start to see that bark form, right. um, and then we'll probe and see where the temperature is at. Okay. In most cases, we don't want that bark to burn. So once it's set, we'll go ahead and get it wrapped. Right. Um, and then we get it back onto the smoker until, it, like you said, it reaches at 203. Right. And then we're pulling them off and letting them rest overnight until service starts. Sure, so now I know that like when I'm at home cooking briskets or the other day we did some beef ribs, you know, they weren't really done till about 205, almost 206. Does that, you don't really, 
Does it matter to you as long as they're in that 203 range? They're gonna so be plenty. we go by the feel right. of the briskets as well as the temp. Um, okay. If I grab a brisket and I feel like it's ready, right. I'll probe it and temp and temp it. And sure. in most cases, it'll either be there or maybe just need a couple more minutes to, sure. to get to the temperature. Itself. Okay. So the way a chef knows by touching a steak, if it's medium, exactly. medium rare, you can touch it and know if your brisket's done. If it's you got that nice maybe, wobbly yeah. there too, right? Feels like you're picking up jelly. If your brisket does this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it feels like you're picking up jelly. Yep. That's a that's a good way to put it. So awesome. I've, I've always kind of been curious about that because I know when you're dealing with such volume, you can't give it the exact attention that you need it. But what's amazing is that you can do it the way you do it and it's going to turn out a better product than my backyard brisket every well, day of the week. So, <laughs> Well, we give each brisket, you know, its own attention to detail. Yeah. Um, there's times we'll go through and maybe it'll be in the front, but it's not ready until we get to ones that are three or four rows down. Right. So you just kind of have to be conscious of that. Not every piece of meat cooks the same. Sure. And, you know, when you're at home versus even on here, it's the same rules apply. No doubt. I mean, I know if I cook two 15 pound briskets right next to each other on the same smoker, even one's going to be done an hour before the other. Exactly. It's, it's astounding. Exactly. Aaron, thank, thank you, you so much, my friend. I, mean, I appreciate you showing I us around. I, I, I tell you, your talent is, is beyond amazing. And uh, just thank you for showing us all your, all your hard work. And we're no, going to no head inside problem. now and taste some of your special treats. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. We've covered lots of stuff outside here, but it's time to go where the real action's at inside and see what's going on. There he is. There's the man himself. There's Jeff. Let's go say hi. Hey, what's happening, Captain? Oh, brother, give me some of that. Yeah, I don't want to. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Want Guys, meet Jeff, the owner operator of Apocalypse Barbecue, the hottest spot in Miami. Thank you, man. It's really nice to have you here. Really happy you guys made the drive. Really excited to be hanging out with you today. Oh, not as excited as we are because I've had these ribs before and I can't wait to taste some of your other tasty creations. All right. So I first met Jeff at the Visit Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival. Okay. I'm there cooking away, thinking we're going to win. And Jeff comes over and says, Mr. Ron here, you got to try my ribs. So I said, all right, let me try that. I took one bite and I said, I'm not going to mind getting second place now because it was phenomenal. Right? Did that, that it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good, true story, true story. Absolutely. It was really nice. Then we got to do another event recently up at Tropical uh, Steakhouse and uh, again, you guys crushed it up there too. So I was, I've been so excited. We've been trying to plan this out. I'm so excited to finally be here today. I'm excited to have you guys. I think we're going to have a good time. Yeah, really man. excited to have a really cool day with you. All right, first stop and most important stop, the bar. Yes, <laughs> so Jeff, what, what do you got going on here, man? So before we get started, yeah. I think can you throw down a smoked old fashioned for us? A smoked old fashioned? Yeah, Ooh. you know, we got we to keep it classy with a barbecue twist. So we have a really wonderful cocktail bar has a lot of really crafty drinks and we like bringing a little bit of our barbecue element to it. Right. We make uh, like candied jalapenos here. Wow. We smoke them and then the runoff, the molasses from the candied jalapenos, we use it for things like our spicy margarita. You're speaking like a foreign language for me, man. That's just awesome stuff. So so pretty much everything, even the drinks have smoked foods in them. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, now this place is part of a golf course, am I understanding that right? Yeah, so we're really proud to be part of the Killian Greens Golf Course. We okay. have a full 18 holes out there. So we get a lot of people that come through, play around the golf. And then after that, they like to say they're coming to the 19th hole and that's where they have the best time excellent the best hole is the 19th hole on this golf course for sure so what he's doing right now uh and he's, he's smoking a little bit of oak wood and what that smoke is going to do is going to drop down to the bottom and it's going to kind of kiss the little fruits that are inside of there with that smoke flavor and then the inside of the glass gets coated with that smoke flavor as well and the reason we do it before we pour the spirit inside is to not compromise the quality of the spirit and not compromise the integrity of the spirit by overheating it and exposing it to the uh, to the smoke that's going inside of it. So it's a really nice flavor, absolutely delicious. We're trying to bring Miami culture into barbecue. I think the barbecue space has always existed in this really traditional way right. in like Texas and the Carolinas, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think Miami's ever had, or South Florida's really had any real barbecue. So, you know, I think, I think the idea is to really tell that story. And for us, what we were trying to do in the beginning was or what we're still trying to do today is really take what we consider like the flavors of Miami to so Cafe Butero, right? When I started thinking about this stuff, I was always like, dude, what, what's the parallel? Like, how do I bring, what's the two Risk things that these two, that this culture and the city or these two cultures, what do they have in common? And for us, it was realizing like, when you go have barbecue, you never have barbecue alone. It's always a group activity. Sure. It's family, it's friends. Bring it's always, together. right. It's always yeah. about bringing people together. So what does that in Miami? Cafecito. For, for me, what brings people together in Miami was cafecito was the easiest answer, right? You never have Cuban coffee by yourself. Sure. It's always served with the little cups because you're going to share. Get one cup and five little shot cups. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And I was like, okay, so how do we how do we combine these two things? And a lot of people had been talking about like coffee barbecue sauce and espresso rub chicken this and da da da. Right. And I was like, all right, let's try it around. Let's see what happens when we start bringing our twist into it. So we started making it, the, like just making barbecue rubs and finding ways to fold the coffee into the mix. 
And I was like, this is a great start. When we found out like we had this rub and I was like, this is a great start. Fun fact, I actually originally started doing it for beef ribs. Oh really? I wanted to do like a coffee beef rib situation. Yeah. That was my that was my big thing. Um, and then I realized later on that it just worked way better with pork. Yeah. Um, but so we had this thing and I was like, all right, let's make a barbecue sauce. And I was like, what happens if we brew the colada and we actually put it in the barbecue sauce? And that came out spectacular. Yeah. What I didn't realize at the time was that eventually one day I was going to be making batches that required 300 coladas. <laughs> <laughs> and that gets complicated. Yeah. <laughs> There's that because, you know, the, the magic of colada is you put it inside the little metal tin. Right. And you fill up halfway with sugar and sure. then you put two drops of coffee and you start. So you need a full time person just making Cuban just making here. Cuban coffee. <laughs> so we, we've, we've now partnered up with. Um, uh, Pinecrest Bakery. Okay. And they have a full time person they that make makes it. those coffee. You. And we go pick it up Monday morning when we make up our sauce. We pick up these jugs of Cuban coffee that Great. they make for us. Wow. Yeah, That's it's crazy. wild. That's I, amazing. I remember the first time I walked in there and I told her when we first opened the restaurant, we were doing about a batch of barbecue sauce needed about 60 coladas. And I walk into to Pinecrest Bakery and I'm like, Yo, I, I need, we had literally spent like a whole day making coffee. I was like, this is not, it's not functional, it's not, it's not feasible. Right. So I walked in and I was like, guys, I need 60 coladas. Like, can you make that happen? I figured they make coladas all day. It shouldn't yeah. be that bad. And the lady looks at me, she's like, que? <laughs> Como? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I need 60. Like, and now, now I can call them on the phone and they're like, ah, tu eres barbecue. Yeah, I'm the barbecue guy. Okay, cool. And then That's they just, funny. They just start brewing this coffee. So That's it works amazing. out really well. So it was, it was really cool to be able to kind of lay down that foundation. And then we just expanded it from there. Like now we have these really cool sandwiches. Like Miami's known for like, you know, their Cuban sandwich. Sure. So we have our version of the, we call it the Cuban cowboy. Okay. And we replace the lechon for smoked pork belly. Nice. And so you have that pressed Cuban bread, ham. So we make our own pickles. We make our own Carolina mustard, which wow. is a mojo infused mustard. Well, which you was, really make everything yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's we're, fantastic. We're, 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 we're all in, so. Gee, I wonder why you're taking off so huge. Everything <laughs> is French handmade. That's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. So, and it's the same, uh, we have an Austin Midnight, which is a tribute to one of my favorite movies. If you guys have ever seen the movie Chef. Yeah, sure. So when he drove through and he stopped at Franklin's. Yeah. And I was like, dude, one day I'm going to have that sandwich on my menu. And I was like, you know what? Here's a chance. So we have that. We have a pan con brisket, which is really great. Um, so you have like, you know, our version of Miami sandwiches. They're quintessential sandwiches. Sure. And All right, Jeff. So we've talked about the ribs. We've seen them on the smoker, but the magic flavor comes from the rub. I, so you're gonna share the, kind of your rub with us. Is that what I, is that what I'm understanding? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some insights. I, I may or may not have left out an ingredient. I may have added an extra one. It's okay. Okay, no, no, we need exact measurements with exact, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So I know it, I know there's some top secret priority information here, but you're gonna share the basis of your yeah. rub with us. So what I always tell people is every rub is kind of a foundation. It's kind of like a canvas for you to build on. Like okay. So you just keep painting. So. Whatever we make here, you can always add, subtract, whatever you want to do and really make it your own. But I'm going to walk you guys through what we do. The foundation of it is Cafe Bustero. That is our, uh, that's our Miami's favorite coffee. It's a Cuban uh, coffee. It's a Cuban coffee, yeah. yeah. Uh, espresso ground coffee. We, we consume this in unimaginable amounts. And so we're going to start off with a tablespoon of that. We're just going to go ahead and scoop it in. There you go. Right. Perfect. And then we're just going to go. Look, I'm helping. There you go. And I do like a heaping, whatever. We'll make a double batch. So I'll add an extra one just for some color. Okay. And that's that's kind of where we get started. And now you got to have your your important flavors, right? You got to have your, jeez, uh, I forgot my, I forgot words. Is that uh, uh, no, this is garlic. You got to have your, uh, for your nose. Right. Yeah, ah, thank you. That's the one. I knew, there was, I knew it was there. there. There we go. We're, we're, we, I like to work kind of in equal parts here. So we're going to do a tablespoon of this. Um, this one's got kind of a strong flavor, so we're not going to do too much of that. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of cumin. I noticed you do heaping tablespoons. Yeah, you know, like I said, it's all love, right? Yeah, man. Uh, in, in, in my household, we always say that we season things until the ancestors say stop. So <laughs> gotcha. that's, okay. that's just that's kind of how it works. That's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> that's just kind of how it works. Yeah. So we got a little bit of cayenne pepper because, you know, you, you got to activate that heat. The, the, I, I wasn't sure what the heat was. It was cayenne. All right, good. Yeah, you, know what, you know what I like about it is, is it's got that heat, but it's, you're not burning your mouth on fire. It's just got that little kiss of heat. You know, right. I, I like that. Right, 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 right. This is a secret that I guess I shouldn't tell you, but we're going to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you. Just tell Just them don't, they, don't, don't tell anybody. Don't right? tell anybody. There's secret. a little bit of cinnamon in here. Okay? <sighs> a little bit of cinnamon. Don't get too crazy with it. And by a little bit, you mean a heaping tablespoon. Yeah, you know, it's, okay. it's okay. Very important that you add salt. Okay. Um, so some, this is, this is kind of a, 
it's kind of a give and take on this one. Some people don't like to put salt inside of their rubs. Okay. Uh, they like to add it after so they can control the salinity, salinity right. of the rub. Um, I go ahead and add it in. I just won't go with a full tablespoon. I'll do about half right now. Okay. And then once I taste whatever I'm cooking, if it needs a little bit more, sure. I'll give it a little bit more. So, I've always noticed it's a lot easier to add more than yeah. it is to take some out, right? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> you, can't, you can't go back and fix your, oh, the, that was a mistake. All right, that's okay. Well, half of it fell in here, so I'm not only gonna put some of it there in here. There you go. There you go. We'll compensate later about on. About a half a tablespoon. Yeah. We'll, All right. And then I like to use butcher block black pepper yes. or a uh, very coarse ground, uh, uh, coarse ground 16 yeah. mesh yep. black pepper. Just to have a little bit of addition to that bark, you want to make sure it has a nice little crispiness. Sure, it's got that texture. It's like the same, that's the same pepper that I use on my brisket. Yep, 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 yep. And then I'm going to give this a little mix, but we're not done because there's a lot of flavor in here, but we need a little bit of sweet. And, okay. and this is where I kind of go overboard. I'm going to do three tablespoons of this. Woo! So this is, a lot of people say I'm probably going to die from a sugar overload. Ah. Mm, I don't doubt it. Um, I have a sweet tooth. I've but... never met a sweetener I don't like. <laughs> Oh, you got to try our cookies before you leave. Oh, yeah, man. You talk me into it. There you go. You know. So that explains, too, then, to me. So between the cafecito and the brown sugar, it kind of explains the dark bark that your ribs get. Because I noticed they have a super dark bark on them. Yep. And, but the flavor, it's kind of funny because the flavor doesn't taste like that darkness. You know, that, right, right, uh, everybody's right, afraid right. the sugar's going to burn, but you're burning your pits at a good temperature. And it doesn't make them burn. It just kind of almost caramelizes it. It's great. There you go. And so at the end, this is what you wind up with. And I always like to do a little, kind of made a little bit of a mess here. I always like to do a little taste. Here you go. Yeah. Oh, that might be a lot. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Just take a little. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you know what's so funny? You can break out the flavors in there. I can break out the coffee flavor. I can taste the sugar. I can, it's, um, mm. wow, that is good, man. It's got a little hint of pepper, a little bit of zip. Oh, nice. Enjoy. Awesome stuff. That is, that's going to be good. I can't wait. So um, next thing up. We do some ribs or what are we doing? Yeah, let's get to it. All right, awesome. Sounds good. All right, so we're gonna start off with one of our Cheshire spare ribs. I'm sorry, this is a St. Louis cut. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put it upside up first. I'm gonna pat it dry. And then I'm just gonna dry off the back too. Okay. I like to trim this little bit of, just if you have a little bit extra back here, anything that's just kind of hanging out that you don't need. So I'm just gonna clean this off, just anything extra here. So you cut the skirt steak off of there. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. And then sometimes we'll just throw that on the smoker too and then we'll have it as a snack. For today, we'll leave it over here on the side. Uh, then I take another paper towel and I just use a, a, a butter knife to kind of get in here and get that little bit going just to kind of lift it up. And then the paper towel helps give me a better grip and I just grab on. Paper towel is a membrane pulling tool of all it's time. The greatest tool in the world. And then I just try to do it in one motion. That kind of started to rip on me, so I grab a little more and I just take that off. There you go. Once the membrane's off, uh, the next important step is uh, I try to keep this my hand clean, so I take my, my glove off. So then we take a little bit of mustard. That's our binder. Ah, it's a secret. The super secret binder of all binders. Just okay. give it a little bit of love. You really want to make sure you're massaging that in really nice. And then we've got the rub that we made a little bit earlier and uh, just kind of give it a nice little sprinkle. Whoops, that's a little much, but it's okay. The more, the better. And then so you just, season everything. You season the back sides, the tops, the bottoms, everything. Yep. Beautiful. And I just pat it in a little bit okay. and then I flip it over, always keeping one hand clean, never touching anything that's, that's meaty. Excellent. And then I just give it another little layer of love. You know, I get asked all the time, doesn't mustard binders change the flavor? I don't find it changes the flavor anything. Plus you're working with pork and mustard is a vinegar base right, right there. So it doesn't add flavor, but it, seems, it just works so beautifully. I, I don't think it changes the flavor at all. I, I just think it works really well to hold the seasoning on top yeah. and just kind of keep it going. And then we just want to give it a nice little layer of seasoning. Just kind of hit any little naked spots we might have missed. Yep. And what's, what's beautiful about the coffee is you already see it's starting to work. It's starting to turn into this dark liquid. Absolutely. And once we're done smoking it, we're going to have this beautiful, really nice, dark bark. That's absolutely delicious. Woo. Let's go. Awesome stuff. And so this is what we end up with. So whenever somebody breaks something or something like that, they have to sing a song for the whole restaurant. This guy broke like 30 glasses the other day, so he has to sing a song. He, has to, he owes him 30 songs. Ah, this is the original song. I don't, uh, could you search up, practice what you preach? Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Hey, cool, that was great. How's everybody doing tonight? Great. All right. 
Guys, uh, here at Apocalypse, we have a wonderful tradition. Whenever one of our team members breaks a glass, they have the honor and the privilege of singing a song for you guys. So if you have a phone and an Instagram account, now is a good time to take that out. Uh, my boy, my boy Anthony right here broke about 30 glasses and a pretty expensive KDS the other day. So he'll be singing all month. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so today he's going to be giving you guys his own interpretation of Barry White. Practice what you preach. I suggest you listen closely because he pretty much only mumbles. But it's going to be a good time for all of us. All right, if you know the words, feel free to join him. Yo, yo. I'm here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl, there's something wrong with me. I've had my share of lovers. Someone say I'm damn good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, y'all. All right, guys, I'm here with Eddie, who's a regular here and a fellow Corvette enthusiast. So, what's your favorite thing to eat here? I love the ribs. Love the ribs? All right, let's see. Yeah, the ribs seem to be a big hit around here. Thanks, Eddie. Enjoy. Bon appetit, Thank my friend. Thank you. Actually, how did you get started in barbecue? What? My family's always been big on eating meat. Yeah. So, my dad's from Argentina, my mom's from Brazil. So, it was always something that was present in my house. And then, when I was in high school, some friends took me to Flanagan's, and I had, like, barbecue, I had ribs for yeah. the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I loved it, I thought it was sure. delicious. And I was like, dude, this is incredible. And then it became like a thing. And once I started driving and I was old enough, I started like hunting barbecue. And I, I literally traveled Georgia to Texas, everywhere just like looking for the best barbecue I could find. It was always about eating it, never about drinking it, right? I have plenty of it stored right yeah. here. And you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I was um, 24, I got sick, I got diagnosed with leukemia. Oh, wow. And I was uh, immunocompromised, and so I couldn't go out to eat anymore. And that meant I couldn't have barbecue anymore. Right. And I was like, hell no, I need to learn how to make this stuff. Yeah, no kidding. So I bought a Weber Smoky Mountain, and I started cooking in my backyard. I learned how to make ribs. And it was just like a cool one, like, since I couldn't go out to eat, it was a cool way for me to make something that I enjoyed. Sure. Yeah. Was, and I had a lot of time, because I wasn't working, I wasn't doing anything, so it was a great way to pass the time. And then it just became like a thing in my life. and. I, um, I started inviting friends over, so anytime there was a game, anytime there was anything going on, I was making ribs and cooking, grilling wings and whatever, and, and then I became- I'm, I'm doing that tomorrow night for a group of friends, actually. There you yeah. go, there you <laughs> yeah. go. I became the grill guy, and so it just kind of stayed as like a thing, and people were always like, dude, you know, you should, you should open a restaurant, or you should do this. I'm like, whoa, chill. Like, yeah. this is fun. It's 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 great right I here. I don't want to take my joy of cooking away, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And so um, I was working in marketing at the time, and I had just left. I had a really nice job at uh, I had a really nice job at Apple, um, and I when I got back from being thank you so much when I got back from being sick, I kind of felt like working in a corporation wasn't as fulfilling, and I needed to like feed my soul. Yeah. And so I, I left and started my own little agency and started focusing on small brands and telling small brand stories. Oh, really? And it was cool because, you know, you have local mom and pop shops and, and they don't have million dollar budgets sure. to go run these crazy campaigns. Yeah. So it was really cool. It was creatively, it was very challenging. I was allowed to express myself in a lot of really unique ways. And I was allowed to help these little, little businesses kind of grow. That's correct. And then in 2020, this thing, COVID happened. And everything went. I remember, I remember that. <laughs> it was just a thing. <laughs> and um, I kind of found myself in a crazy situation. I was at home. All my clients were like, dude, we don't know what's going on. You know, they didn't have big budgets, so they couldn't be like, yeah, we're going to hold you on a retainer. So sure. everything kind of came to a standstill. My wife, God bless her, she was she was working as a, as a nurse. She's still a nurse. She was working as a nurse at Baptist. So she was working. So you never saw her. So I never saw her. And then because I was home all the time, I was the errand boy. Right. So every time she needed something done, go do this, go do this, go do this. And I had been talking to some friends and I was like, dude, like, you know, need to kill some time. Maybe I'll barbecue, maybe I'll do something. And one day she, she sends me out on an errand to FedEx. And I remember I have the box and I'm walking out the front door and I, I, I step outside and I'm just like, bro, F the apocalypse. Like, I just want to make barbecue. And I was like, dude, apocalypse, apocalypse barbecue. barbecue. I love it. And so I, I love it. It was great. It worked out perfect. And I dropped the box. This is like 90% a joke, right? I'm like, I'm gonna go, whatever. I went inside, I made a logo, I made a little website. 
And I, I hit up a bunch of my friends and I was like, listen, go on Instagram, share this Instagram account, say they're the best ribs you've ever had. You've had my barbecue, you know what it is. Say it's the best things you've ever had. I'm gonna start selling ribs this weekend. And I sold like two orders that weekend. Right. I was like, cool, like, it gave me something to do. I didn't think it was gonna make me a ton of money, but at least I got to kind of hang out for a little bit. Keep busy doing something. You know, yeah. and, and then my wife couldn't talk to my wife, doesn't really love me barbecuing all the time. She's like, it's messy, I don't get to talk to you. So, so like, now I'm like, now, babe, babe, I'm making money, right? So yeah. you can't tell me I can't do it. And so it just became a thing, and we started doing this in our backyard. And two ribs became four, became eight, became 16. Next thing you know, like. All of a sudden, you got a massive following. Right? Yeah. All right, we're starting off with some smoked fried right, wings. Let's look go. Look at that. Okay. So, okay. Here so tell we us have, about what we've got here. So here we have these really, really nice chicken wings. Uh, we start off with the with the Oro Negro rub that we made earlier yep. and our Corada infused barbecue sauce. Okay. We smoke these bad boys for about four hours. Right. And then after we take them off the smoker, we give them a quick little flash fry just to uh -huh. give that skin some crispiness. Smoke a fried. Smoke a fried wings. And then here we are. Beautiful. I would love for you to take the first bite. I'm going to do that. Here we go. I'll join in with you. Cheers. Oh yeah, I love it. It's special. So you see the dark, the dark color comes from the coffee, mm -hmm. which really gives it like this look. A lot of people think it's burnt. They're not burnt. No, and they just have that nice smokiness mm -hmm. and that coffeeness. A great flavor. They don't even need sauce. They're just so good. Wow. Mm. All right. All right. So this is our brisket bacon. Here's your, the plate's gonna make life a little bit easier for okay. both of us. So this is our brisket bacon. We start off with a beautiful Cheshire pork belly. And then uh, we season it like our brisket. So it's salt and pepper. Okay. Uh, coarse sea salt, 16 mesh black pepper. We smoke it for about six hours. And then we slice it into these thick slices of bacon. And then we fry it, we pan fry them. Oh. And we serve it with our Carolina mojo mustard. Awesome. So how do I eat this now? Do I eat this with a knife and fork? Do I, I would I, barbecue is, a, is, is finger food. Maybe was, a little hot, but man, you can go in there. I was hoping that's what you were going to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, I'm going in. Look at that beautiful with, with that nice, beautiful fat line right there in the middle. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, it's hot. Yep. <laughs> I like I like to rip mine into little pieces, but you go however you want. I'm, I'm going full on dip and bite. There you go. Dip. Oh, hot. <laughs> oh, fresh. God. Fresh. Mm. Thank uh -huh. you. That's money. Mm. So we smoke this to about two or three internal before we pan fry it. And the reason we do that is because we want it to be fully rendered because we also use it for our, our, our Cuban cowboy. So our version of like the Miami Cuban sandwich. Mm -hmm. And we replace the lechon with the smoked pork belly. Wow. Yeah. Just wow. That's good stuff. Good stuff. So I said, when we sat down, I said, I'm going to take one bite of everything because I don't want to fill up. I lied. <laughs> I totally lied. It happened, it happened. Look that little crunch. Yep. Get, get the tenderness from the pork belly. Oh my God, that is just killer. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really beautiful play on textures because like you said, you've got that softness from the super rendered fat mm -hmm. and then you've got the crispiness from the sear and then you've got that nice smokiness to it. I always get a little nervous when somebody says they're serving me pork belly. I've been served more under rendered pork belly in my life than anybody. And if it's not rendered right, man, it's not good. It's not. That's rendered right. Man, oh man. Look at that. Now here we have the star of today's show. Yeah. Oh, we'll save that for last. Okay. Here we have the brisket. All right. So this brisket goes for about 24 hours on our smoker. Sea salt, coarse black pepper. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Then we've got our house-made cornbread. Has to be in the shape of a skull oh, to match our it. logo. Love it. Uh, that gets a little bit of honey and some sea salt on top. Here we've got our, our smoked, uh, smoked mac and cheese. Yeah. We smoke our cream cheese, put that into our roux, and then we make our mac and cheese with it. Wow. And we take little chunks of the brisket bacon, we chop it up, oh. and we and we refry them <laughs> to make a little bit of chicharron situation on top. Our lemon pepper That's coleslaw. Kind of situation. That's a great situation. Our lemon pepper coleslaw, so we fresh squeeze lemon juice and orange juice every morning okay. to make a really nice, bright citrusy coleslaw. It's a great palate cleanser in between all these heavy oh. foods. Beer battered onion rings, some nice shoestring fries, and of course, our coffee infused uh, Oro Negro ribs. Right. I, I automatically want to go right into the ribs because I know how good they are, but I got this brisket here, so I'm going to go ahead and taste you this first. All right? Bite. Let me know. I'm going to start with a French fry, you know, because. Ready? Look at that. You know it's right when it comes apart like that. That's amazing. Oh. 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 
Love it. Oh, Love man. It. Tender, juicy. Got that little bite from the pepper. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love barbecue. You must have known I was coming. This is my favorite. I love shoestring. I I don't, love I'm not a big fan of like a big steak fry. I'm not. Give me a shoestring fry. All day. Oh, All day. man. So, you might remember these ribs. I've, I've been fortunate enough to have them twice already. <laughs> Why do you think we're here, man? <laughs> All right. I'm going in for a rib. Yeah, I, I, I have to. Yeah, so this is, the, this is the beautiful ribs. We put that gorgeous rub on them earlier. And look at the color on them. Now, this also has a barbecue sauce on them, right? A light yeah. sauce. I don't know if it's possible, but it's even better than I remembered. And, you know, you love that bite. It's not quite fall off the bone. It's right on that edge. But look at that perfect bite through right there. Oh, man. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. It, it, it should almost be illegal. Oh my god! They've tried. They've tried to ban us from making them, but <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Good lord! I mean, shut down. And a gorgeous smoke ring. All right, got the beautiful pork in the middle. That beautiful dark bark from that cola from the cafecito. Oh man! I can't get enough. I'll join you. I'll join you on one of these. Dude, I'm gonna roll home after this. It's tough. It gets tough. Oh but my god! Let's go. Mm. I'm always afraid when I see a big onion ring like this. I'm always afraid, okay, I'm gonna bite into grease. That is the least greasy onion ring I've ever bitten into in my entire life. We've spent we've spent years mastering the art of the perfect fry. Good Lord. <laughs> Jeff, I gotta tell you. I, I would love to tell you which is my favorite. I don't think I could. I mean, I, I just wanna get more of everything. When I wanna get more of everything, I'm a happy, happy man, you know? So, so Jeff, I want to thank you so much for having us down here today. I mean, this is great. Your your, your setup is great. I, I love to see all these people having such a great time, enjoying all this tasty food and how barbecue brings it together. So, man, I just want to say, just killer job, brother. Why don't you tell the nice folks out there where they can find you, you know, everything about you. Here. Yeah, absolutely. For, thank you so much for coming down here and including us. Love what you guys are doing. Love what Fogo's doing for the barbecue community. And if you guys are... Looking for some good barbecue, we're here. We're located in the Killian Greens Golf Course, 9980 Southwest 104th Street. Follow us on Instagram, at Apocalypse Barbecue. Hopefully, you'll have a platter like this with us soon. Can't wait to have you guys here. Yeah, get down here, folks. You, you don't want to miss this stuff. Um, this is this is what barbecue is all about, man. This is what it's all about. So. Um, that's all I've got for today. You know, listen, if you like what you saw here, remember to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and leave us a comment. Tell us your favorite barbecue joint, all right? And if you're in Kendall, near Miami, definitely get here. So until then, remember to get out and grill. I'm Captain Ron, and I'll see you next time on The Fogo Life. Captain Ron and Jeff, out.